Okay, so I want to give you a rundown on the Bearhawk fuel supply system from the firewall back. I finally got it complete. Um, it's a pretty simple system, but I've uh, modified it in a couple places to, to fit my specific mission. Um, none of the modifications are really necessary. Decide for yourself. Okay, so on every Bearhawk, there's going to be two main fuel tanks in the wing. One they're going to sit, one over here, and one on the other side. Each fuel tank is going to feed two lines. Those lines are going to come down opposite sides of the door and meet at a T in the front. On my plane, I've modified this back line to come down to a T rather than an elbow. Normally, this line comes down through here, and you can see I routed it inside this aluminum uh, former as much as I can. Try and keep that out of sight and uh, out of harm's way. Then it'll come down through this steel part to normally an elbow, and then go forward underneath your door. Allow me to interrupt myself while I show you what a normal installation might look like. That line comes down to a 45 degree bulkhead fitting before proceeding forward through a grommet in the aluminum former here. On the other side, it's just a simple curve through the aluminum former with a rubber grommet where I put a uh, union connection for future maintenance. Uh, for my T, it runs down and goes over the control cable underneath the floorboard to an extra drain that I put in here. I'll explain that later. Okay, so from this aft T here, you can see the line moves underneath the door former, goes through this forward door frame former, and then meets the front line, which goes by the instrument panel, down at the, this bulkhead T. The bulkhead T mounts into this nice bracket that's welded to the frame on the quick build kit and then runs over to the fuel selector where it meets the other side. This fuel selector is sold by Mark at Bearhawk and that's the only place you can get the right one. I think it's by far the best option. You notice that it has off in the back where it needs to be and it also connects to the gasculator through the back underneath this plate which makes for a pretty seamless transition uh, without any awkward plumbing. This bracket comes with the kit, this plate comes with the kit, and of course the gasculator does as well. The gasculator down here is attached to a line that runs through this bulkhead here. Um, for me, back to a pre-filter. From the pre-filter it runs to a electric boost pump. From the electric boost pump, here you can see it goes back through the bulkhead and then forward to the firewall bulkhead uh, where I put a uh, 45 in the bulkhead fitting. The pre-filter and the boost pump are only required for a fuel injected uh, system. Um, I'm using an airflow performance system so I needed a finer filtration than the gas collator would offer and I also need that electric boost pump. So I want to quick go over some of the tools I use to fabricate the uh, fuel lines. It's a pretty straightforward process, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but these are what I used. This tubing cutter, purchased through Aircraft Spruce, has worked flawlessly. Also, this is the tubing bender that I've been using from Imperial, also purchased through Aircraft Spruce. This is the flaring tool that I've used, also purchased at Aircraft Spruce. And after having leak tested all my fittings, it has worked flawlessly. All of your tubing is going to be connected to your uh, fuselage tubing via a combination of plain steel clamps and Adele clamps. Alternatively, you can use this lacing called Cora Seal with a special kind of uh, knot to secure your tubing. So I mentioned that I added a couple of fuel drains to my system. I'll explain why I put those in now. Um, I'm going to be on big tires. I'm also going to fly in some pretty cold remote conditions. So for me, this elbow slash T is going to be a low point. Allow me to explain that just a little bit better. This angle right here, uh, when on big tires, can become slightly negative. It's only a couple of degrees or so, but it's enough that the fuel will have to go back uphill before getting to the gas collator, which should rightly be the low point in the system. Um, so there's some remote possibility that I'll have some water accumulate at that low point, turn into ice, and block the system. So by allowing water to drain all the way back here, I'm uh, 
decreasing the odds of that causing my engine to fail, but it's a pretty remote chance. So that's my bare hogs fuel system. I made some modifications for uh, the conditions I'll be flying in and also for fuel injection, but uh, overall it's pretty simple still. I think it'll work.